Hey everyone, I am Sarah and tonight we are going to be doing a drawing stream. So um, I just want to go over the um, uh, tools that we're going to be using. So you are 100% welcome to use a number two pencil and just the pencil, the eraser, and a, a sheet of printer paper is fine. Um, I do recommend, as you can see, I've, I've worn my eraser down. I do recommend having another eraser around. Uh, it's handy, especially if you're erasing large areas. Also, I like to keep a pencil sharpener on hand because you never know. You don't want to not have a sharp pencil. All right, so you can use number two, no problem. I'm using this set. It's called the Giaconda. It's by Koei Noor. And what I'm going to be mostly using today is a 2B pencil. The main difference is a 2B is slightly darker than the uh, number two pencil, which is an HB. But um, otherwise, you guys, with my lighting, you would not be able to see what I was drawing if I don't use this. So I'm going to use that. Um, the other key is uh, it comes with a spreader. And these are really, really handy, especially with what we're going to be doing today. Um, there's all kinds of little you know, nooks and crannies that you want to get into. Um, and then a kneaded eraser, which we will also be using. Again, you can do your best with, with the eraser that you have. Um, some people will carve their erasers into a point, but with the kneaded eraser, you can just mold it into the, the shape that you need and then you can erase with that little tiny point. All right, so that's the supplies. I do wanna show you a couple of things. First of all, if you notice in the top right of my screen, it says my name and there's also Bumbread. Bumbread, are you, um, you're muted right now, but we have stream chat on Discord and anyone is welcome to join. Um, you can actually, go ahead and say something, Bumbo. Hello. So, ta-da, there's Bumbo. Um, so he's gonna be joining us and that way anyone can, if you have questions, if, you want, if you're following along, with the drawing, then um, that is a really great way to be able to be live with me and ask questions. Okay, so here's how you do that. So notice down here at the bottom of my screen, on my left, um, there is, it says Art Share, and it's got a Discord link. That's not actually a link on the screen, but there is one somewhere um, in the, uh, on my channel, I think if you click on my profile picture, it will take you to my page and you can go to the about section and there is a discord button there. Or you can type if you are in chat, you can type exclamation point discord and it will give you the link there. Okay, let me show you what you're going to see when you get over. There's a couple useful things. So first of all, um, you're going to come over here and these are the channels you're going to see. Um, stream chat, this is where we are right now. You can join us just by clicking on it and make sure you have a microphone or something set up so that you'll be able to talk to us. Um, but if you go to reference photos, there is a place where you can, um, every time I do a class, I post the day's reference photo so that you can come and you can use it. Now you can also click on open original and that will open up the larger file so that you can actually follow along with me or of course, you're always welcome to just watch and follow with me when I, as I'm working. Okay, so that is Discord. I think we're ready to get started. How about you? All right, so first things first, we're gonna actually change our paper to um, landscape orientation. So we are doing a still life today. We're doing a floral study, however, it's going to be wide because of the leaves that come off of it. So um, we're gonna be doing landscape. So landscape is left to right and portrait is up and down. Okay. So Bumbo, are you gonna be following along today or are you doing your own thing and just hanging out? I'm gonna do my own thing. By the way, what are we doing today? Today I'm going to be doing here, I'll show you, um, if you go under, uh, let's see, I'll bring it up again. If you go into reference photos, see one of my channel's reference photos, there's a rose there. That's what we're going to be doing oh. is that rose. Yeah, I see. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, 
Let's go ahead and get started. So what we're going to do, we're going to start from the center and move out. Um, so find the center of your page, go over about one inch, and then we're going to draw about a one and a half inch diameter circle. Okay, so what I'm going to do is draw like a line that's about one and a half inches, and then that gives me about what my circle is going to be. And it doesn't have to be exact. And I'll erase out that middle line. So this is going to be our center of our rows. God, there's something on my screen and it's making me, it looks like it's on my paper, but it's not. Okay. So now we're going to do two swirls. So starting in the center, we're going to do kind of a, a, an elongated C like that. And then on the other side, we're going to do another elongated C that way. So two swirls. All right. Now what we're going to do is we're going to draw our petals. Uh, let's see. So what we'll do is we will take one. We're going to do kind of a wavy line. Wait a minute. I went the wrong way. Hang tight. I should have gone to the top of it. So we're going to the top of the swirl, the outside of the swirl. Okay, so you come up and we're going to do like a wavy line going this way. There we go. Like that. And I don't, I wasn't paying particularly attention to how I was doing my waves. I just, you know, just kind of let my pencil flow. We're going to do the same with the other one. So we've got our two wavy lines. Excuse me. A little sneeze there. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and very lightly just fill in these areas. This is going to be the center, our shading coming from the center of the rose. So I'm very lightly, I'm not pressing hard. One way um, I found to understand pressure is to draw on your hand. You can use, do the same thing with a paintbrush. I frequently will take a paintbrush and just paint on my hand and feel how like the different, like the thinnest line is when you're barely touching. So then you get a, an idea of how hard to press. The same thing goes with the pencil. You can get an idea of how hard to press because of how hard it feels. So, you know, if you want a very, very light line, barely touch. And, and uh, by using your hand, the back of your hand, it, it helps you understand the pressure. So we're barely touching. I'm, I'm like, my pencil is barely even touching the paper. I'm going to uh, tilt back my light here just a little bit because I feel like, there we go, That this was a little bit difficult to see. There's a little bit too much reflection. Okay. So now what we're going to do, we're going to start layering our petals on the outside. So the first thing we'll do is coming, let's make this into like a little bit of a point down here. We can fill that in. Just down here, we got a little tiny point. And then from there, I'm going to do a wavy line coming out, and it kind of arches up. And we'll just, we're just going to like let this kind of come down like that. We're not going to finish it. So we're not going to let the, the two lines come together. 
okay? Now we're going to add another line and it's going to start right right there where this meets. We're going to come over just a little bit and do another wavy line. This one's going to come out to a little bit of a point here, so it just comes up a little bit and then curves back down. And it's going to end here, but then we're going to pick it up on the other side of this point here. So what I do when I'm doing that, I just imagine that my pencil is going across, but I don't actually put any pressure on it so it doesn't draw a line there. I mean, even if you did draw like a little line there, that'd be okay. You can always come in and erase it. Um, but that's what I do that to be able to make sure that my lines are meeting to where it looks like they're petals that are that just went underneath this petal. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and add a little bit of shading right at the top. So we're just doing a little bit of kind of coloring like we did before. And it's going to curve in when it gets like towards the edge, it curves in so it doesn't go straight across to the end of the flower. And then it kind of uh, comes up. It's going to be concave if you are looking at it from the, the dark part of it. And it's just going to loop right on around and then connect to that little that little area here that we already shaded in. So I'm going to get mine filled in and let you take a look at that. I don't know why I'm all sniffly. It's been raining a lot here. Maybe that's why. All right, so you guys see how that connected. So this is my shadow there. All right. If you're just joining the stream, you are always welcome to join us in voice chat. Um, we are on Discord. Oh, hey, we do have someone joining us. So VTRMS. Hey, welcome. So I'm getting a little bit of an echo. What you might need to do is mute Twitch, but you should be able to hear me on uh, on Discord. Now, are you going to be following along today? Or are you just watching? All right. Okay. All right, so, so where we are so far, we drew our circle. We, um, let's see, I'm, I'm still getting a little bit of an echo. Do you have Twitch muted? Oh, hmm. Well. All right, let's see. Let's see if that, yep, that sounds awesome. That's better. Thank you. Okay, so um, what we did, we drew, we have a center circle, which was about an inch and a half in diameter. We did these two swirls. We added the little wavy bits on the outside, kind of colored that in. And now we've been just adding on top of those. We've been adding wavy lines on top of those, just layering those in. And we're about to layer some more. So I'm going to add another one here. This one's going to go right above this point there. And it's going to come around. Let's see. 
and it's going to come down this way. Now this, we can continue this line out here. So let's continue this line out a little bit. All right, let's see, what else do we have? We'll also continue right here. We're gonna continue this out a little bit as well. And then we'll do one more coming from uh, we're going to start from this wavy line that we have here, kind of come up to a point. Roses a lot of times will have these kind of points in their petals. So you'll notice like as you come along and they also have what looks like um, torn pieces. And so we're going to actually be working those in later, but they do have these little points in their petals. All right, so we're going to come around and we're just going to end right there. Just going to stop it. All right, so let's add some more shadows. So this one, we're going to add, come directly from that line that we drew there. And it's going to go right up to the edge of that petal below. Now, if you guys have any questions, uh, feel free to ask, like especially if we're just doing drawing and stuff like that. Like if we're just in the middle of shading or something, it's a good time to ask questions. Hang on just a minute. Let me turn you up a little bit. All right. Sorry, VT. Go ahead. Oh, okay. So, um, so what I did was I drew an inch and a half diameter circle, a little bit. You go find the center and go about an inch from the center and then draw your inch and a half diameter circle. From the circle, once you have that, we did two um, swirls. So we just did a swirl here, and then we did another one right inside of it, a swirl this way. Then I added these wavy lines on top of the swirl, like on top of each side of the swirl, and shaded all of that in. Everything past that has just been adding on wavy lines, like going further and further out. What I'll do is I'll take a little break and let you kind of catch up to what I just said. I'm, I'm just going to be shading in. So I'm just going to be f filling that in. I'm going to fill this in too. The reference photo is also under reference photos. I know you know where that is because you, you did the chibi. An excellent chibi, by the way. I'm going to do another swirly, swirly guy here. And maybe dip down like that. There we go. I'm looking to see where I'm missing. Oh, not here. So 
So all I'm doing is every time I draw like a new layer on the outside, I make sure to add some shading right up against the previous layer. All right, and then I'm going to take a water break and pause for a minute and let you catch up. Crixano, welcome. Hello. You're welcome to join us on voice chat if you'd like. Let's see if I'm doing any more petals. I think I'll do a couple more. So I'm going to do one that comes up this way. And then I'll do another one that comes out of that one. And just let it be kind of free form, you know. Maybe have a point every once in a while. So like I said, roses have those points in them. But we're going to be adding a little bit more detail later. So again, every time you add a new layer, add just like a little bit of shading around the outside. And we'll be using our spreader or your finger if you don't have a spreader. Um, a little bit later to like catch some of these areas and make them look a little bit softer so you don't have to worry too much just as long as you get a little bit of color down so that we have something to, to blend VT, do you mind if I call you VT? Or is there something you would like to be called? Uh, don't mind. Okay. Yeah. VT or Victor. Okay. Okay. Well, do you mind me calling you Victor? Nope. Okay. Cool. I like the name Victor. Sounds very regal. Okay, let's see. I brought this line here. I brought this shadow out just a little farther than I wanted. So I'm just erasing. Remember um, always to blow, don't wipe. Otherwise you can smear your drawing. All right, let's see. We've got to get some shading in this guy up here. Like I said, we're not being particularly picky about the shading right now, just getting something up there. And then we'll actually do quite a bit more later. We're going to actually give more shape to these petals. Right now, they're just kind of blobby. But we're going to actually give them some more shape. In drawing, you always want to work from abstract to uh, specific. So you always want to get your big shapes in there first and then start getting more and more detailed. If you start with your detail, what ends up happening is a lot of times your proportions or things like that get off and then you have to erase your detail. And, uh, and a lot of times you can see, kind of like last week with the anime, um, how I, I think it was my nose and my mouth, I put them in the wrong place. And so when I erase them, then you can still faintly see them, which isn't a big deal, you know, it's not that big of a deal because this is just drawing class. So we're not doing any professional work or anything here, but um, 
just something to keep in mind that you're going to work like with big shapes and things like that first and then just get gradually and gradually uh, more detailed. I'm going to give everybody a chance to catch up. See how everybody's week is going. Bumbo, you said you were not going to be um, following along. Is that still the case? Or did you change your mind? No, I'm following now. Oh, you are? Okay, cool. I finished, I finished the duck. Oh, you already finished the duck? Yeah. So Bumbo has been um, practicing drawing different figures. Um, he's been doing like the female figure, and now he decided he wanted to draw a duck. So Bumbo, you'll have to upload that to the site. Um, that's another thing. I didn't really point that out earlier when I showed you my Discord site, but on there, you're welcome to share. If you're following me today, you can actually upload your art. Just take a picture of it and load it there, and we can talk about it. Or you can upload your own work, like if you're working on something. Um, like one of, one of my followers, Flux, um, he actually does his own type of drawing. And so he uploads his stuff there and we talk about it. So it's just a place to share art um, and you're welcome to share anything. I don't care what kind of art. Um, if you have more mature art that you think should, uh, is probably not appropriate, consider that I do have some children um, that come on my Discord server. So if you think that is the case, I do have a mature art um, channel that is blocked and you have to ask me for permission to access that channel. But if you want permission and you're 18, just give me a holler and uh, just basically you can either ask me um, in direct message or, or whatever. Um, and I can give you the role so that you can access that channel. So far, we don't really have anything that mature in there, but it could get potentially very, very mature, like not just maybe like nude figures and things like that, but maybe some things that someone might consider vulgar. Um, I welcome all art. And so that's why I created that channel because I want people to be able to express themselves and put anything up regardless of whether um, societally it might be frowned upon. Um, I do not frown upon it. So I, I wanted it, people to be able to share anything there. So that is why we have that channel, but it is blocked to minors. So. Okay. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna start creating our jagged edges around the outside. Remember I talked about getting more and more detailed as we go. We're gonna start creating those jagged edges. So I'm gonna start from the very inside. And as I come around, I'm just gonna randomly come in and just add, like just kind of indent See, I'll hold this up so you can see, because that's very small. But see how I just did like a little V? So you can do a little V. You can actually chip in, like basically do like a line like that. Let's see, that's very, again, very small. But see this line here? You do that. And then what you do is you just round either side of that line, almost like you were making the letter M, and that that's the center of the M. And that's going to make it look like it's cleft, like the, the petal has been split. And we're just going to make this up as we go around. I'm, I'm not even really looking at the reference photo too much. Um, we can come down a little bit farther and, and kind of pronounce some of these peaks and valleys. Make them maybe more um, straight edge instead of all curved, you know. I'm just generally trying to give it a little bit more of an organic appearance. And in fact, some, t some of these I'm going to get like really wavy right in parts. And don't worry about, I am making mine a little bit darker so you can see them, but um, we were going to come in here and do the shading, do more with the shading to kind of cover up those lines. So don't worry about there being dark lines. All right. Say again. Uh-huh. 
Yes, yeah, what we'll be doing is we'll actually be coming in here and darkening that up a little bit like that. And so it's gonna actually, you, we won't be able to see these edges as well. But we're just not to that point yet. Okay. But yes, we, you're correct. We are gonna be doing that. All right, so out here. Making it even more bumpy. Like I said, every once in a while you can add like a little, like a little cleft, which will make it look like it's like that. It's like a little crack in it. I'm trying to hold my pencil so you guys can see what I'm doing. Otherwise, my hand's right over it, and that's not very helpful. Remember to add like some more wavy lines. It just gives it the appearance of like torn edges. Now not all roses have these kind of torn edges, but a lot of them do. We're all so diligently working. That's good though. Usually when I'm teaching live, a lot of times I'll have music going in the background or something like that. Um, just because, you know, so it's not total silence while we're working, but this is fine. I don't mind. And get chatty. Now, I'm a big fan of, you know, someone mentioned earlier, uh, Bumbo, this was on a different server, but Bumbo was talking about, you know, doing his own art. And somebody mentioned that you should definitely get a reference photo. And I, I firmly believe that, like, if you want to practice drawing something, don't try to do it from your head. Always try to get some kind of uh, reference photo or um, go out and actually look at the object. That's even better because then you can look at it from different angles and understand why it goes some of the ways that it goes. Like say you're doing a tree, for example. Um, trees are one of my favorite things to go outside and draw because they're very cooperative. They don't move. They're very good subjects. They'll stay wherever you tell them to be. Puppies, not so much. All right. So notice that I've got some of these areas here. And you can go ahead and shade those in if you want. Like the areas where I went past my previous lines. You don't have to though, because we can always catch those with the spreader. All right, let's see. I've got this big mama jama here. So 
So Victor, how long have you been drawing? Yeah. Why can Let's say that again? Just uh, a long time. Just practicing rough rowing. Yeah. I got gotcha. you. Well actually I'm doing some class but lost some motivation. Yeah. I got out of it for a very long time, and then I started teaching it. Uh, it started as like just kind of a side job, just to make some money while I was in school, and now I'm I'm full back into it. So it does just, it's kind of like you have to practice practicing. <laughs> Can like um, something I know this sounds strange, but luckily, uh, lately I've been having a problem reading, like like physical books you know and you guys can maybe be able to see I've got this book little bookshelf up here and this is just like this is an even uh a one hundredth probably of the books that I own I own quite a bit of books they're all in boxes um but I just have I've gotten so bad and plus I've got all the kindle books and I can do those okay I can definitely do audio books but my attention span has just gotten really bad for reading physical books the thing is, is I mean, I used to read like four or five books at a time, um, you know, where like if I, if I was starting to not get bored, but you know, like say, okay, I, I want to read something else right now. I just moved to another book and just, you know, keep going back and forth. And um, now I can't even read one. So everything takes practice. So I'm, I'm having to practice now reading, practice my attention span. <laughs> Yeah. Well, I really got spoiled by audio, by like listening to podcasts or watching videos of things. Um, I definitely got spoiled by that. You know, just being online and consuming online all the time has just made it very difficult to consume the physical. <laughs> So what I did just there is I had gone over my line a little bit, so I just kind of erased out. All right, let's see. We'll do our our giant ones on the outside. And I may or may not be moving faster than you guys, so I'm trying to kind of go slow and be chatty, but I will give a little bit of a, a pause at the end of this to let everyone catch up. Okay. Well, I actually prefer that. Normally, I mean, I'm going at this the speed that I go because I'm teaching a class. But normally when I'm working by myself, I go quite slow. Um, I don't know. I just, I like to take my time. Drawing to me is very meditative. Oh yeah? yeah. Well, you can tell. I got a new pencil. I'm trying to test. Yeah. Then I knew how to use it properly. Prixano says I've been similar a similar way recently. What way is that, Crixano? I apologize. I didn't see when you wrote that. So remind me what part of the conversation that was. Say again? About the books. Oh, about the books, yes. Yeah. Oh, man. That's the one issue with being online all the time and like having all my books are online, you know, even my textbooks for my classes. It's just, you know, I've just gotten used to. to reading and consuming in that way. 
Well, even like, for example, there's a, a TV show that I've been watching. You guys don't judge me for this, okay? But I'm about to tell you a horrible thing. There's a TV show I've been watching that is, originally it is in German, but I have been watching it dubbed because I can't focus on the subtitles. <laughs> like it has really been, and I don't know German. So, um, so I've been, by the way, I highly recommend it. It's on Netflix. It's called Dark. Excellent. I'm going, I'm going to go back and watch it in German and I'm going to go back and read the subtitles. I just, I wanted to get through it and understand what was going on. And I wasn't able to do that by, um, just looking at the subtitles. Like I, I really tried and wasn't getting it. So I'm a little ashamed because I'm not a big fan of dubbed. I think you lose a lot. Like you, you need to hear the tone in people's voice. You need to hear how people are saying things, hear the original language and how things are said. Um, you miss things, especially like there aren't really any songs in this, but like, you know, when there are songs or music, like you miss, you miss the nuances of things like rhymes, like rhyming words and stuff like that, that, you know, you don't get if, you, if it's dubbed. So I, I do generally believe that it's better to watch something in the original language that it's done in. But like I said, to my shame, I'm, I'm uh, watching it dubbed the first time. Every time after this, I will watch it in the original language. I promise. <laughs> Bumbo said yesterday on my math exam, I realized that I spent four hours thinking about nothing. Four hours just being concentrated. Well, that's good. That's like meditation, right? Did you pass the exam, do you think? I mean, Bumbo is quite the mathematician, so I feel like math is not going to be a problem for him. All right, so I've got one more line to do. That's this really big one here. There's no way I had failed. I was aiming for a high score. I think certainly above 70 out of 100. Is that all you needed to pass was 70 out of 100? Bumbo, it's not like you to be quiet. So I've got lots of little little bits in here. I'm going to just try to clean up. And that buys some time, too. I forgot that I was muted. Oh. <laughs> Hi, Bumbo. Uh, I mean, I forgot that I was on the board. Oh, I see. You said you don't know what the pass score is since that was never your goal. Wait a minute. Passing isn't your goal? Isn't that what you need to pass school? Because <sighs> this is this is your, well, sen your senior exams, right? <laughs> That wasn't my goal because I knew I was going to pass it anyway. Oh. You were going for a certain number of questions? Uh, I was going for certain, maybe. Well, I wasn't going for anything, to be honest. Okay. I just wanted to uh, have the highest as much as I could make it possible. Well, that's a way to do it. I actually, I remember taking my math placement test when I first got to college, and I really wanted to take calculus again. Uh, so I specifically answered everything correctly up to uh, the point where I knew they started asking the calculus questions, and then I just didn't answer those questions. That's funny. So I actually got 100% on the part that I did answer. But I, of course, I skipped the calculus. I probably could have, I, now that I know, I could have just gotten out of all math and not had to take any math. But I wanted to, you know, I wanted to take math. I like math. So, okay. Um, schwa 
some of you know, some of you don't know, but he, he goes by Schwa Dev on here. He's a streamer. He, um, uh, he usually, he hasn't streamed in several weeks, but he normally streams um, programming. Uh, he writes in Odin, which is a newer language. And anyway, he's also a game dev, so he's creating a mathy robot game, which is pretty cool. But he and I have talked about maybe starting like a little math club or something. Thought that'd be fun. Bumbo, I figured you'd probably enjoy that. And that we thought about what we do is just do some consumption like, um, you know, maybe do like one Khan Academy course a week or something like that, you know, and like learn, learn some new math concept or maybe not a new concept, but a refresher concept or whatever, but just something fun to challenge ourselves. I don't know, Bumbo, does that sound like a good idea to you? Yeah, maybe. Yeah. So you guys, earlier for dinner, I had these excellent um, black and mahi fish tacos. And while I was there, I got this, which is called a hibiscus margarita. So I've been trying not to drink it too much, but it's very good. Um, just so I, I'm not, you know, consuming a ton of alcohol on stream. That might not be so great. Or maybe it would be great. I don't know. Maybe you guys would get a kick out of it. <laughs> See Sarah drunk. Um, I wouldn't get drunk off of this little of amount though. That's, that's small. <laughs> um, it looks cool. Uh, you were recently reviewing some linear algebra stuff for OpenGL. I need to learn some linear al algebra. Linear algebra is one math subject I actually like. Uh, you really like it. Cool. Yeah, I need to learn that. Linear algebra is something that I, I'm going to need to learn um, because I would like to do um, graphics rendering. That's what I want to get into. I want to really get into shading, um, lighting and shading and all that stuff. So I'm going to need to know some linear algebra. All right. Now, <coughs> we've got our points. So now what we're going to do is we're going to actually draw in our leaves first. We're not finished yet. Um, we're going to go ahead and sketch in our leaves and we'll do all of our shading at one time. So the first leaf, um, let's see, let's do this one here. So coming from this little section here, I'm going to do kind of a curvy S shape. Maybe it's a little, a little too curvy. I might end that a little sooner there. Okay. Then I'm going to scoop up like that. So this side is curvy. This side is just one single concave curve. Wait, convex. Bumbo, which one is which? Which one goes up? That's a uh, convex, right? And concave goes under, right? Concave. Uh, convex shape is the one that take any point any two points on those on the shape uh -huh. the line in between those points would be inside the shape always and the concave is the opposite of this <clears throat> so i've got two points what shape is that it's it's actually a concave but because there is like there are I would say it's not property of line. It's property of the shape as a whole. Oh, of the shape as a whole. I see. Okay. Well, then I just really have been confusing things. So this is... Concave. I thought concave is what, like, was... Concave, uh, there is a word cave, like a hole. Yeah. It has holes. Okay. Basically. Got, gotcha. That's the way to remember it. Good. Good. By the way, Bumbo also teaches, he has not streamed in a while, but he teaches math on his stream and he has taught some geometry and some trigonometry. And um, when are you gonna stream again, Bumbo? I don't know, maybe not. Maybe not? Uh, well, he's a very good teacher, guys. He's good at explaining things like he just did. That was pretty good. All right, so I'm gonna do uh, another one over here. I'm putting that kind of the S shape on the bottom, always on the bottom. You don't have to, you can do it either way. 
you want to do a linguistic stream, that would be really cool. Um, Crixano is really into linguistics and he has written several of his own, um, I always forget what they're called. Con, I know Conlang. Conlang. But what does that stand for? I can't remember. Um, constructed language. Thank you. Um, so he's, he's written several constructed languages, including his own alphabets, um, like his own characters. So um, he's very into linguistics, and that would be excellent. Um, but you may want to consider talking. I think that that would be an important part of linguistics. It's communication. He's also writing a program right now that um, I don't want to talk too much about it because I don't know how. I mean, I know you've written some of it online, so it can't be too secret. But uh, it's basically, it's Yond is what it's called right now. I don't know what the, I think that's a working title. Um, but it's going to be the, um, it does grammar for you. So like it helps you conjugate your verbs and um, it helps you with parts of the sentences and all that stuff. It's pretty cool. I, anyway, you could try to explain that, but I don't know if I'm going to be able to explain it as well. Uh, you're renaming it to Lingua per your suggestion. Awesome. I agree. I think Lingua is really cool. Also, that's the name of his Discord server. Um, and if you're interested in language or linguistics, then I recommend that you join that server. Cricks, if you want to post a link uh, to your server in chat, you can. Um, or you can post it in on my server as well, on my Discord server if you want. Both places would be great. All right, so I've got my, my just arc shape. How about that? And we're going to do like a very simple line right in the middle of these. And I'm doing that relatively lightly because we're going to be doing some funky stuff with that. In fact, even the outside of these are going to end up being jagged because rose, rose leaves have like kind of jagged lines. So um, you don't have to draw those too terribly dark. We've got one more place coming from right here. We're just gonna have one big line. This is gonna be a stem. And then we'll have a smaller line that comes out that way. So yes, if you're interested in linguistics, then I highly recommend that you join Krixana's server that he just linked in, in uh, the stream chat. All right, so here's what we're going to do. Remember, our curved line is towards the bottom. So we're going to curve. We're coming up a little bit past where that end is. And then just meet it on the other side. And then we'll do one more over here. So remember, our curved line's at the bottom. And then our arc line is at the top. And I don't know if there is something to that. If that is just how it's drawn in the reference photo, I don't actually know. Um, but that is the way all of the lines are drawn. So that's how we're drawing them. You have a fun channel on there too called Fact Dump. Oh, that sounds cool. I should have a fun channel on mine. I think my fun channel is the Mature Art Adult channel. Nobody ever po posts anything in there though, so... Again, if you want access to that, you just got to ask me. Just DM me. All right. So now what we're going to do is we're going to actually start drawing our veins in our leaves. So these are all um, going to be parallel to each other. Oh, you did ask me about it, uh, but I did not. I don't think I did see that message. So um, just ask me again. Or do, you don't even have to ask me, Crix. I'll go ahead and add you. OK. So these are all going to be parallel to each other, meaning that you know we don't have any that are going like that or anything. They're all going to be going the same direction. Um, they do not have to be in the same place in fact, I would stagger them. Uh, 
and they're going to gradually get bigger. I'm going to do one side first. Okay. We'll do that for all of these. Let's see. Now, I am thinking a sound effect in my head, which is a little whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. That helps me, you know, just get that, that wrist movement, whoosh, you know. You do not have to make the sound effects, but I'm telling you, art is a lot more fun when there are sound effects. Whoosh. This side, this side whooshed a little bit differently. All right. No, oh, those ended up being very even. That's all right. I'm going to leave it. It's fine. You got to go clean up my table. All right. Sounds like a plan. Clean workspace. That's important. All right. Last one. Let me see if I can stagger these. All right, so we've got all those now. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go around and we're going to give it the jagged edges. So all these are going to be, I'm gonna show you over here. We're just gonna do like that, okay? So it's just a, it's a scoop up. So we're gonna scoop up and then come back down like that. Scoop up, come back down. You haven't started working on your one painting uh, that you were thinking about. This is one problem you sometimes have that you have ideas and you never end up starting the project. So um, what I usually do, because I have a lot of ideas too that I don't, uh, sometimes it's just a matter of time. Uh, always keep a little journal. I have mine right here. And so I'll just show you guys here. I'll show you here. So this is like my art journal. So like, for example, I was doing, um, you guys might be able to see this in the background, actually. This was, uh, let me see if I can. Oh, sorry. So you can see this weaving here that I did. This is the weaving, but see how it's dyed? The colors, look at the colors here. What? I know. Okay. So um, what I did was I figured out how to make my dies and then I put a little mark there you know I drew pictures of what I wanted to do um, this one here that's on the wall is from this see and look it looks like it how about that but see how I have like the the copper and I made notes you know and so I basically sketched out what it was I wanted to do um, this is one I never got to so I haven't done this one yet that's gonna be like a self-portrait kind of collage um, this was for a ceramics class that I did. This is, I like doing bugs and stuff like that. This is for um, an actual drawing that I did of roots coming from a man of war. So, you know, but that, but it's really good to make notes. Sometimes I have poetry in here, you know, things. This was just fun doodles. Like I was at a bar, my friend's a bartender. I call her a beer tinder because she only does beer. They don't, I think beer and wine, they don't do anything else. So this is her. I did like a cartoon version of her. Um, this was like an art project that my nephew had for, for one of his classes. So just to show, yeah, I mean, this was like, I just drew a couple lines and then from those lines made up something. So, so yeah, that's a good idea. Like you, you just make notes and decide what it is you want to do. And then you at least have like, um, a record for maybe one day. Maybe you'll come back to that. You know, I'll come back to one of those ideas that I had, like that that collage um, self-portrait, and I'll work on it, and it's going to be great, you know. Or maybe I never go back to it. But at least I wrote it down, and I made notes as to what I wanted to do with it. So, like, for example, yours was the flag. 
and you wanted to do the flag in white with a black background um, and like you had you wanted it to look burnt and like there were all these things that you wanted to do like with the flames and stuff and so jot all of that down in a little book and what's great about these I bought this like at a craft store you know they, they came in like a pack I think it was like for parties or something that you could give them out they came in a pack of like I don't know six or something and um, they're great because they're really thin you know so you can like stuff them in in your book bag or stuff them in something and you know they don't take up that much space all right so I kind of lost my train of my thought but we're gonna have one point up here at the top and then you're gonna start going the other direction with your little like I don't know for some reason they remind me of horns I got excited I was talking about journaling for art and it's funny because when I was actually at in art class we had to do we had to do that like all of our teachers required that we keep a little journal and that we write everything down and I hated it when I was forced to do it but now it's a great idea and I do it all the time that's not even my only journal that's just the one that I had been using in school heard of the bullet journal I have not so just so you know if you notice I'm not going all the way down to the bottom so I'm coming up and then starting my jagged jagged edge like that it's a system for journaling it's weird to explain I'll have to look it up so again I'm, I'm not going all the way down and it's okay that you've got that line in there and that's okay that well, you know we're, that's gonna get covered up with shading All right, I'm gonna work on this one here this one by the way I did go all the way down to the bottom because I was thinking that the leaf is like kind of behind that it started further down same thing for this one I feel like it started further down so I'm just giving it these jagged edges All right, now here's where we're going to start darkening things. So first we're going to come in here right in our center. And we're going to darken right around the inside of everything. So just the inside. I'm just kind of letting it curl around. All right, then we're going to do a little bit darker right above where our our jagged, you know, like our little cur curvy lines. We're going to come up a little bit from there. And what this is doing is this is creating an edge. So I've talked about this before in my classes, but instead of having lines, you want edges. And that's what it's going to be like more in realistic drawings is that you have all these edges. Um, and it just makes it look like a little bit more like I said a little bit more realistic you don't have that many lines really in nature when you're looking at things everything's an edge I'm gonna bring I'm gonna bring this little little crevice out a little bit now this recommends if you do have a pencil set this actually recommends using a darker pencil like a 6b but I'm going to stick with the 2B because I want you to see that you can do this with the number 2 pencil. And 2B is the closest I have uh, to where you'll be able to see everything. All right, Krixano says, your poetry talk reminded me about the Hebrew poetry of the Bible. You can't actually see the rhymes. Oh, uh, you're talking about like when I was talking about the dubbed and stuff? 
Um, oh, interesting. So for example, you can see one of the rhymes in the second sentence of the Bible. Okay, I'm not going to even try to pronounce that. Um, Go for Oh, very nice. That does sound very poetic. I'm checking my Hebrew Bible. Okay. Bumbo said, bullet journaling is interesting, uh, though I've never felt the need for logging. Well, you know what? At some point, you probably will, Bumbo. So now we're just so you know, now we're just doing the outside of everything. So we did the inside of these because it was like in the middle. And you can you can bring that around if you want to. You can actually connect them in parts if you need to. But now we're just gonna go around the outside of everything and just we're just creating a slightly darker area. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna be blending that. Now, I am starting to get pretty close to uh, smearing things. So um, something you can do, you can take like, let's see, I've got paper towels from my painting classes. So you can take a piece, another piece of paper or a paper towel and just fold it and just rest your hand on it. And you can move this around and it doesn't really get, oh, that did pick up a little bit, but it doesn't really pick up that much. Especially if you're staying pretty stationary. Whereas your hand has oils on it and that will actually move everything around. I almost wonder if I didn't get that one. I feel like it, no, I had to. Like I'm wondering if I missed one of my lines earlier when we were doing the, the shading, I mean, like the, I'm not the shading, the edges, like doing the funky edges. I don't think I did. It just looks a little undone. Okay. We're just coming up just a little ways uh, from the top, like just out a little bit so that basically it doesn't look like a line. It looks like there's an actual like area of color there or area of darkness. Area of darkness, that sounds spooky. Don't go into the area of darkness. All right, so this guy, I don't think I ever continued it around, so I'm gonna go ahead and just bring that on around. I don't know why I didn't, I just stopped. All right.
Oh, get a sneeze. <laughs> you guys keep talking in chat, but you're actually on the voice. Um, you're considering doing a bot for Lingua to track language learning progress. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I, I remember you mentioning that, I think, in DM. I think that's a great idea. Yeah? Sorry, say that again. Oh, okay. So this set here is by Koei Noor. And let's see. I will just put this. They're called Giaconda. So here's the brand, Koei Noor. And I, I know you can get them, I'm pretty sure you can get them like on Amazon. Um, here we have Michaels, you can get them at Michaels. Uh, although, I don't know, I, I haven't really seen them anymore, but they're made by a company. So Koei Noor is part of a company called Chart Pack, C-H-A-R-T-P-A-K. And uh, they have their own website that you can buy them on as well. And I think I might be able to give you a discount code if you were interested in these. Um, like a pretty significant discount code. So I'll, I'll let you know. Um, I'll, I'll see if I can look that up and find it. Um, I can... So, okay. So we have... That's, that's a good question. All right. So the way I've got it is I've got um, my red or sepia tones, which are chalk. Then I've got three graphite pencils, which are my 2B, 4B, and 6B, which is the higher the number, the bolder. B stands for bold. So the bolder they get are, so the darker, basically. Then I have, these are called silky blacks, but what they are, there's three um, lead pencils. So I have their levels, one, two, and three. One is actually the darkest, and three is the lightest. I know that sounds weird. But um, then I've got two charcoal pencils. Then it has the exact same things in stick form. So it's these, but just in stick form. Uh, no, this not not this. I, I mean, this is very, I don't know if it's like um, not real lead or what, but it's not dangerous to use. I don't think it's like real lead. I think it's like... Um, Honestly, I don't know what it is, but it, it's not harmful. They wouldn't be able to sell it. Definitely not in the US. We are too Sue happy here. So they would not be able to sell lead here. <laughs> so it's called lead, but I think that it's like a, a synthetic or it's something else that is called lead and it's compressed. I know that it's different than graphite though. And you can actually see the darkest graphite pencil with the lightest lead pencil. This is graphite. This is the darkest 6B. Well, it's the darkest graphite pencil that I have. This is the lead. So, hold on. You see, see how this one's darker? Let me just put another line there. Like they're close, but this one's actually darker. And this is the lightest of the colors. So what you end up getting is here's the darkest one. It's almost like, uh, and then you've got charcoal. I always do two lines so that you can see. Here. Charcoal gets really dark. So, okay. So I've finished filling out all my, all my stuff there. Um, I'm going to start using my spreader. So you can use your finger as well, or you can take like a balled up paper towel, or like if you take a balled up paper towel, you can come in here and, and work in the area. Like you can make it into a point. Um, 
but I highly recommend getting these. Usually you can buy these by themselves, either on Amazon or like Walmart or places like that. You can buy, they sell them in packages, usually of two. Um, but they're, it's very handy. All it is is a rolled up newsprint, but like you're gonna see how, what this does. Of course, my whole table is, look at that, look at that, look what that does. It just blends everything together. So you've got this hard line over here, but as soon as I get at it with the spreader, and I'm just going up past where my line is and letting it kind of fade out. And I'm just letting, I'm just picking up my pressure so I don't basically make it too too much pressure. Like that. But see how it's like blending it and making it look a lot nicer? That is the magic, ladies and gentlemen, of the blending stump. Now we can imagine that our rose is a color. If you want, you can take your blending stump and go all the way to the top. And then what we'll do is we'll put some highlights in later if you want. So, or if you're using your finger, you can go all the way to the top. Now you can, you don't have to get, you know, the koh Noor is just what I use, um, but you can actually, there's all kinds of like pencil sets out there. And I would highly recommend for just your basics, get something that has like at least three different Bs, like two B, four B, six B, something like that. You can do almost everything with just those. Um, but it is handy to have charcoal. Charcoal is quite a bit darker. I mean, you can see in this, this is your charcoal here. So it's the darkest of all of these. There's actually two charcoal. Oh, nope, that's a lead. Where's my other charcoal? This is my other charcoal. Um, but you don't necessarily need to have all of the ones I have here. You, you don't even really have to have the sepia tones. In fact, when I teach those classes, I usually just have you guys grab a colored pencil. Um, so, so you don't need you don't need a lot of fancy tools. In fact, I always say it's not the tools that make the artist. But um, it is handy to have a couple different, uh, like for example, I'll show you. I'm gonna use my 6B. I'm gonna come in here. You can see like how that really darkens it up and you can like crisp up your lines. It's almost like inking. This is the inking that I talk about. I talked about last week. You know, you, you can really crisp up your, your lines and, um, and then when you come in with like a, uh, your spreader, it's not going to touch those lines as much, you know, so I might come in. And it won't touch those lines because they're so dark. Like it'll blend it a little bit, but it's not going to really affect it as much as it would if it were just the 2B. And I might come in here and just go a little bit darker here down at the bottom. And a little bit darker right here. And if you need to, you can always come back in and go over your lines again. But 
so yeah, so having the darker pencils are very handy for sure. Like I said, even if you just had a couple of them. Now your B pencils will go all the way up to, I believe, 10. I think it goes uh, 1B to 10B is the range. And like I said, the B just stands for bold. You also will find pencil sets that are H. I don't recommend getting those unless you are going to be drafting, like doing architectural work or very graphic work. Um, so Flux, who comes on here, he might actually benefit from using an H because he does a lot of very graphic um, detail where you need... Um, Jet Set Geometry, welcome. I love your name. I think Geometry is Jet Set. Geometry is one of my favorite math subjects. So, um, what I was saying about the pencils is I would stay away from the H's unless you're planning on doing um, illustrative stuff. Because H's are, are, you get a finer point and they are very uh, shiny um, versus being darker. So you can get much lighter lines, like very, very faint lines. Um, so H's are good for things. They're just not great for when you're drawing realistic stuff like we're doing. So I recommend getting the B's. And your number two pencil is smack in the middle. It's an HB. You can actually see, if you can see right there, see that little HB? That's, it's right in the middle of the two, uh, the two scales. So as you can see, because I'm blending everything, it's starting to look like really, really more realistic around the outside. And like I said, we'll be putting in some highlights here, so don't worry about the fact that we're getting rid of all of the white in our flower. Um, when you use your spreader, it is much easier to erase than the actual pencil itself. Um, I'm not entirely sure why, I guess just because it's spread around or because it's like less, you know, there's less on there, but either way, um, we'll be able to erase this with no problem. So just go ahead and get everything in there and then we'll create our highlights. All right, so we've got the outside done. I'm gonna go ahead and get these leaves over here. Since I did it with the 6B pencil over here, I wanna go ahead and continue and do it with 6B here. I'll do my outside. This is another way too, like I said with inking last week, is that if you have any kind of little mistakes, this is where you catch it. Catch it with the, the ink or the darker pencil. Darker pencils are harder to erase, so you might as well be drawing in ink. That's the way I think about it. That way, if I make any mistakes, tough bananas. All right, and I'll use my spreader. Spread around. And I'm just kind of following the shape of the leaf. Like, so I'm following my veins. I did want to go ahead and tell you guys tomorrow I was going to have a painting where we were going to paint a rose um, but I have to cancel that class because something came up okay so I figured I'd let you guys know now there will be no acrylic painting tomorrow I may do a makeup session. I have not decided yet. If I do, it might be during the day, someday during the week. 
I've got my crochet class on Monday. I mean on Tuesday rather. So Jet Set Geometry, if you think math sucks, why do you have a math name? Or are you being funny? Are you gasping uh, because I'm canceling tomorrow's class? Kirksano. It's tough on Saturdays, man. Saturday is when everybody does stuff. I can't do it Sundays because I've got meetings all day. So, you know. It's hard. It's hard to do classes on the weekends. Just so you guys know, I actually thickened this little stem right here. I thickened it just at this end and then let it gradually get smaller. So it it is Bumbo technically I think isn't it Cresano or I think it's pronounced differently. I pronounce it Crixano mostly because I'm stubborn and that's how I've been pronouncing it, but I think I'm pronouncing it wrong. Okay, uh, this is how you pronounce that. Okay. Okay, yeah, I'm definitely not pronouncing it that way. Sorry, I love you man, but uh, I can barely. <laughs> it's going to be. Yeah, what is that from? It's um, a guttural. It might be a V layer. Hold on. Well, but I mean, what where did you get that name from? Oh, it's just my name in one language. Oh, oh, it's your actual name. Gotcha. Okay. It's a be like fricative unvoice or unvoiced. I gotcha. Yeah. The <laughs> from. Ah. <laughs> 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 and then the k is um, an affricate of the the t sound and the k sound. Yeah. And then it goes into an uh, rabbit. Okay. So, cri, cri, cri. I cannot do anything but French. <laughs> I can, well, French has some guttural stuff in it. A little bit. There's some, so some very throaty on. things. <clears throat> My French is rusty, but I can do some. One uh, sound I cannot do with a life name is uh, rolled R's. Rolled R's? I can do that one. You can't do the R's? Even though yeah. in my native language there are rolled R's. You can't do it even they. Yeah. even though they have rolled R's in Russian? Ah. Uh, I gotcha. Like this, I can do it. Uh, but in conversations, it just doesn't. doesn't like. Per, perro. So, uh, I've seen recently that speech impediments are actually quite common. Oh, yeah, I'm sure. Um, over half. Over half? I don't know about that. I I don't I don't know about over half. Maybe maybe though. Well, okay, it might depend know. on like how they're classifying like what is considered speech. Right. Yeah. I don't know how true this is, but I heard that uh, parents should not repeat after they, their child's speech if they have some defects or something. So they shouldn't repeat it if they say it incorrectly or they something? They should not repeat the child. Uh, that should not repeat the child's speech. So, yeah. Um, so, like. If the child says something in a funny way, you should not repeat that. Right. You should 
take normally. No, that's correct. That is correct. Um, so, like, for example, my sister, when she was little, she would say, uh, she had, like, the, it was the cutest stuff that she would say. Like, instead of ambulance, she would say ambulance. Or instead of pillow, she wouldn't say her L's. She'd say B, so pibbo. Um, things like that. Or she'd sometimes she'd just make up words all together. Um, in fact, I've said it on one of my streams before. I said we were run us done. And she got it because she was on the stream at the time. But she used to say runnest instead of almost. We, we don't know where she got that from. But she would say, like, we were in a car or something. She would say, are we run us there? You know, like, <laughs> like oh. instead of almost. But yeah, but we, I don't think we ever really repeated after her. I think her biggest problem was that she had a big sister, me, who would speak for her. So she didn't learn to speak until later, you know? So like she would just point to something and I would say, Laura wants this, you know, because I'm little Miss Bossy Boots and, and I just took, I just took over. I'm trying to remember where it came. Yeah. All right. I'm, I'm struggling with this part here. So I'm. If you get a part, like I'm getting a part where my lines are just darker than I want them to be and so they're not blending well, you just erase the top of it. So just erase that top line. And then just go in and, and shade and it should cover it up. Oops, I don't want all those eraser marks in it though. Say again. Oh, so I am from the United States. I'm currently in Florida, which is the Southeast United States. Um, I'll let everybody else say where they're from. I'm from the Midwest US. Which mine? So the middle, yeah, Midwest US. So yeah, the middle of the United States. Bumbo, I don't know if you wanted to. Where are you from? I'm from Russia. Yep. What about you, Victor? Brazil. Brazil, nice. Yep. That is, uh, Portuguese is another language I would love to learn. Uh, is the Portuguese from Portugal or Brazil? Brazil. Well, it's like I'm learning Spanish right now and I'm learning Argentinian Spanish. So, you know, because my friend is from Argentina. So that's, I mean, that's how I'm learning it. <laughs> Ironically, he lives, he lives in Spain, but, <laughs> but he, he's from Argentina. Spanish and Portuguese, they are very different. Right. They seem similar in places though. Like, like some of the vocabulary seems similar. So the uh, whether a language is similar to huh. another language or not is actually a very complicated question. Oh yeah, I believe that. I will say this though, like for example, when I started learning Spanish, I was able to pick it up faster, I think, because I knew French. So I think romance languages in general do have enough similarities. Um, yeah, let me clarify. Well, obviously, they're not the same. Yeah, I know. So, <laughs> what I was meaning was whether a language is the same as another language is very complicated because um, politics are also involved in it. Oh, yeah. Some people want to classify a language that might be very similar as a different language. Mm -hmm. and also, we have like old English versus modern English. Right. Well, does anybody actually use Old English? I uh, know. Okay. So, hopefully it's not too much of a, a fight. Well, there is, there is, like, in some language that, um, like, I mean, where people debate on whether they're the same or not. Yeah. 
So, Victor, what were you going to say about Portuguese? Yeah. So Spanish is very different too. Right. Now I would like to go to Brazil. It looks very beautiful, like in all the pictures I've ever seen. There is a place to go. Let's go. Uh, I don't have anywhere specific. <laughs> Just. I'm trying to think. No, I don't really have a specific place. It just I just want to go. I want to travel everywhere though, to be honest. It's I just want to go everywhere, especially I scuba dive. So, a lot of these places are really great for diving. The water is prettier there than it is here. <laughs> Do you have a recommendation of somewhere that would be a good place to visit? Like maybe a coastal, a coastal place? Ooh. Uh, hot places, cold places. <laughs> well, yeah, because Brazil is huge. Yeah. So, uh, in the south, right now, it's cool. The north is, you know, the temperature. Well, yeah, because, um, you guys are in the middle of winter, right? That always can threw me off. It confused me, like the whole southern hemisphere. It throws me off. Like yeah, our Christmas is the great summer. It's very strange. Yeah. Okay. So I've got all my blending done. I don't know where you guys are, but I've got all of this blending done. I should say. All right, now we're gonna do some highlights, you know, because I, I colored in areas that I didn't necessarily want to be, so we need to get some highlights going. So our highlights are gonna be all at the edges of our petals. So I'm gonna come in, and I'm, I'm shaping my tool, but if you are using, you know, just use the corner of like an eraser. And I just come in and I'm just dabbing. And I'm just dabbing at it. I'm, I'm not really erasing per se. I mean, I am because I'm sliding if you want to see. So uh, do, do, like that, I'm just dabbing at it. But I, at the same time, I'm kind of moving it off to the side. So let's see if our light source, our light source is kind of coming from above and maybe to behind it. So um, it's really just the tips of these that would be white. Yeah, I like that. I always have to look and see what you guys can see because yours, it, it looks different live than it does on the screen, like what you, on the monitor. Um, what the camera picks up is very different. So I have to like look and see what does OBS say you are looking at right now. So I'm not going to, I'm only going to go on the, um, the highlights. I'm only doing it at the top. I'm not going to do it at the bottom because these are going to be in shadow I and mean, we might have like a couple little areas, but we're going to actually have shadow here. 
So I don't want to get too, too highlighty down here. But right here we will still have highlight because it's not hiding anything. Nothing is being hidden. You know what? I realized I just, there was a, a dark spot here that I really should have gotten. So I'm gonna... There. Rixana, are you following along? I thought you must not be if you're looking stuff up. Are you going to do the do the drawing later? Yeah, I'll do it later. Cool. I came in late. Gotcha. Yep. By the way, I clarified what I was saying in the chat because I can't really explain. Okay, let's see. Language difference. Stuff. Right. Um, so one of the main things that's debated is whether two languages are really dialects or separate languages. It can get complicated, but there's this thing called mutual intelligibility. Mutual intelligibility uh, is just whether a speaker from one language could understand a speaker from the other language, even if there are differences. Um, and Bumbo says, it's as far as I know, it's used to distinguish whether the relation between two languages are those are dialects or different languages. Right. So, um, you know, what's really interesting about dialects, though, is sometimes you can't tell. Like in China, for example, you can go from one village to another village and not understand the person, which is why everybody learns Mandarin. Because then you can understand the president because the president speaks in Mandarin. Like whenever he does, uh, you know, speeches or whatnot. So you always can understand the president and you can always communicate with other Chinese people. So everybody learns that plus their own dialect. And um, so for sure you have like dialects like where you cannot understand the other person. Um, I'm just coming in here and doing right at the tip there. Also another problem is um, that is one problem where like uh, things that are not mutually intelligible might be considered dialects or languages and it all like depends on politics and all these things. But um, also linguists just can't hand anything. Right. Well, it's probably like every other discipline. You know, nobody can ever agree on anything within a discipline, I feel. Like linguists have like um, uh, a lot of different like terms for the same thing, uh. like aorist and the other term for aorist. I think it's uh, All right, so we need to do a background because right now our rose is just kind of floating, right? So first of all, now this, this recommends using charcoal, um, but I want you guys to know that you could use a number two pencil. So I'm just going to use my 2B. And what we're going to do is right up at the top of the rows, I did this leaf a little too high up, so it's going to actually go beyond this, the leaf's going to go beyond there. But right up at the top of the rows, and like I said, if you need to just follow through and see where that goes. We're going to do like a little kind of table, tabletop there. And you can bring this further down if you want. I'm going to. Oops. And uh, to continue, some terms even have like different meanings based on what language you're talking about or mm -hmm. what sub Interesting. Like cool. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to shade everything up here. 
Now, if you do have a set like this, what's really nice is that you do have things like this where you could come in and do large areas. But again, I want you guys to see that this can be done with a number two pencil. And what I do is I do one layer and if I want it to be darker, I do a second layer. I'm probably not going to make it darker just because I don't want to be doing this for a, a terribly long time. Edges are the worst when you get to the edge of the paper. So I'm just, I've got my pencil angled at like probably about 30 degrees from the paper and I'm just kind of going to town. Now, as I get closer to the rows, I want to be careful to not fill in any spaces by accident. So I'm going to kind of slow down a little bit. When I get to the rows, I'll slow down. So Victor, what time zone are you in? Like what time is it for you right now? Right now here is 11.46. Okay, so you are four hours from where I am. So technically I'm in Florida, but I am getting ready to very soon move to the West Coast. So I've been putting myself on West Coast time. That's why all of my all of my classes are in Pacific time. That's why they're kind of late. It's because I'm trying to get used to Pacific time. Oh, you like drawing late? Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's great then. That, that works. Gotcha. That works out perfectly. <laughs> I like doing things late. I feel like I'm a little bit more productive late at night. Okay. Um, so we've got this up here. Now, again, you could go darker if you wanted. I'm not going to. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start laying in my shadow for my rows. So starting probably about here, I'm just going to do the dark kind of like I did. Uh, inside each of these. Told you you were going to get an hour long tangent about linguistics. Yep, that happens. Well, that's why you should do a linguistic stream. All right, I'm only going to go to right about here. And then this is going to actually curve out. I'm going to do a very, a very gentle, barely visible line. That's just going to kind of curve around on both sides like that. Yes, Bumbo can do math about anything I have found. Okay, now I'm going to do a little bit lighter. And I'm again, I'm not worrying about like where it is because we're going to blend it with either our finger or our blending stump. Now remember our light source is coming from back here. Oh, sine, cosine, tangent. Ha ha ha. That's funny. I didn't catch that either. Good math joke, Bumbo. Oh, 
Okay, and then I'm going to do even lighter out here, like hardly anything. And you don't even have to fill in everything because we're going to use our blending stump or finger. Okay, now when I get over here to the edge, I'm going to go over my edge just a little bit with the blending stump. And it just kind of softens that up a little bit. I know what it is that's making the noise over here. I don't know if you guys remember from my My class I had these little clips on here like on my paints to like push them down and I've got them kind of up against the wall so as my table shakes it's making them bump up against the wall so I apologize oh right right okay so remember on this side I'm going to come out just a little bit with the the blending stump just to get it, you know, just give it that lighter edge. Okay, I'm turning mine because I found that it's a lot easier since I'm right handed to come at it from the kind of the bottom angle, bottom right, than it is to come straight from the bottom. Now, the cool thing about a blending stump is that you can put it on its side. So let me, let me get the rest of this done here. And then I'm going to put it on its side and I'm going to blend out that way. So Did I hear a kitty just now? I thought I did. Nope, that was not. That was a person. I don't know why it sounded like a meow. Meow. Yeah, I'm lucky. I tell my mom, because my mom lives here. I just tell her that I'm going to be streaming and she's pretty quiet, so I'm lucky about that. She's very respectful. Thanks, Mom, if you're listening. She, sometimes she's on. I don't know if she's on right now. She doesn't really talk that much, but yeah, it says she's on, so. Hi, Mom. All right. Ta-da. Now, um, if you want, you know, you can go ahead and just put some color in your background if you want, just for like, so it's not just pure white. And then it, it gives it a little bit more of a, an ambient look. So, you know, it's just not like pure, pure white. It looks like you did something with it. And like I said, you can use your finger for that. So this is it. Now notice that my leaves are like really dark compared to everything else because I used that pencil. So I wouldn't recommend if you're going to use that, then I would recommend going around everything else. I mean, I might as well go ahead because I already did that. I mean, if you're doing a realistic drawing, I wouldn't have probably gone that dark. I was just trying to show you what you could do. But 
Otherwise, those leaves are just going to stick out like a sore thumb. This is not going to look good. That actually looks interesting if I just leave it like blended down at the bottom. Huh. I don't want to go too dark, but I'm going to try something here. What I'm doing is I'm going to try what I just did with the, the bottom where I'm just leaving it open and see if by inking it I can make it look interesting to where like it's blending at the bottom. I don't know. I'm going to try it with, with everything else though. So like when I get to about here, I'm just going to kind of stop and like only ink the top. I don't know. It might look dumb. I hope, I hope not. Oops. This is what I do in drawing is I'll, I'll like get started on something and be doing it a certain way. And then all of a sudden I'll have an idea like, Ooh, I wonder if I did this. So a lot of my artwork ends up being experimental, even though it didn't start out experimental. Sometimes it starts out experimental. This, this thing here on the wall actually started out experimental. All right, let's see what this looks like. Well, now that's interesting. That does actually look kind of cool. Yeah, I like it. I think I, li I like that it, it gives it like a, like a half done look a little bit. I mean, and I could even come in here if I really wanted to and like, you know, add a little bit of darkness you know, and just like really play up the drama. I'm not going to continue with this, but, but I'm just showing you guys something that you could do. You would want to use your blending stump again if you do this. Like that. Let's see, look at that. That, whoa, look at that drama just by darkening it just a little bit. Man. This is the fun part of drawing where you like start kind of going off and doing your own thing. So now has any, you guys were following, did anybody finish yet? Is like anybody in a place where they could upload to the server so we can take a look at it? If not, that's okay. You can always upload later. I just was curious. Okay. Okay. Wait a minute, what did you say? Shady. Too shady? Oh, you're doing the shading? Yeah. Okay. I see what you're saying. I was hearing that differently than you were saying, and I apologize. Too shady. <laughs> but you're too the shading part. I get it. I still learn the English, so... Well, your English is very good. I. I'm just, uh, I was just, that's one of those things that it wouldn't have matter who said it. E even if you had 100% perfect English, I, I still would have misunderstood. Um, you said it correctly. I was just, look at that. Look. See, Crixano agrees your English is really good. I think it is. But like just adding that darkness over here, like look how dramatic that made that. Man. Well, now like I, I want to keep going, but I, I know that we have to end the stream. But um, what I might do is I might finish this up and I'll post it. It probably won't be today, but I'll post the, um, the finished results after I add all this 
shading of it. Look at that. That's really interesting. That is really interesting, like how much drama that adds. Yeah. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and sign mine because, I mean, I'm pretty much done. I'm, I'll, I'll add a little bit more. Let, let's talk about it because I like to do the um, I like to do the critique. So I probably wouldn't have drawn these lines in the back. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, no, what I'm probably going to do is I'll probably come in with the charcoal and darken this up quite a bit in the back. That's going to really lend to the drama. I'll probably come in here with some charcoal in here. So that's going to darken that up a little bit. I haven't decided. I may let it look like this bottom part is more natural and this top part is more dramatic. So I haven't decided whether I want to shift that yet or just leave it. It kind of looks cool that it's inked like this, uh, just in part. Um, I have plans. So I have got to go. <laughs> that is why I have to end the stream. So I don't have to end the stream, but I really would like to because I am on East Coast time. So my plans are um, later. It's kind of late here. So I don't want to I don't want to make it any later than that. All right. So um, I honestly don't have a ton of negative feedback for this. I mean, I think I did pretty well, honestly. Um, I mean, I could probably put a little bit more cracks and crevices in here. And like I said, I'll keep working on the shading, but um, overall, I, I think it's pretty effective the way it is. So I will finish up, you know, the dark bits and uh, what I was doing here with the drama and I will post it. Um, it did anybody post in uh, Discord? Oh, I did. Okay, well, let's go over here first. Okay, so let's bring up Discord. So first things first, Bumbo posted this duck earlier. And <coughs> I think that's excellent. Bumbo, were you looking at a picture when you posted this? Uh, yeah. That's, that's excellent. And so that's why I think it's good. I really like the reflection here. It's very effective. Okay. Um, and good, you already got to, you already got to be positive. Okay. Now Bumbo did his flower. Now he did a different perspective for his rose. He still got all of the little jagged edges and everything, but he went from a, from the side rather than the top. Like we were excellent Bumbo. That, that is good. I, I have no, I mean, even your shading and everything. Did you do this from a picture or from your memory? So then you did it from a different angle too. That's impressive. Quite impressive. Good job. Well, I cannot wait to see Victor's and uh, Crixano's work and anybody else. Let me uh, just pop back over. So anybody else who has done um, the drawing along with us, even if you are following along um, from the uh, video on demand, on Twitch, then um, you can you can still upload it anytime, and let me know that um, like it, it will notify me so that I can come over and look at the the artwork and we can talk about it. So thank you everybody for joining me and especially on the voice chat. That was such a treat. Like it was very nice to have you guys here. Um, you know, as we get used to having the voice chat. It'll probably be more talkative. Uh, like we'll probably be able to chat actually a little bit more. Um, so, but you know, we're, we're still getting used to being on this, but I like this format a lot. I think that it's a lot more helpful that you can ask questions right away. Um, oh, I forgot to give a B positive to the Rose. Thank you, Crisano, for catching that. Okay, well, thank you uh, for joining and um, like I said, tomorrow I'm going to be canceling my stream. I will try to make that up later in the week, um, maybe like on Wednesday or something or Thursday. I'll try to do a my normal midday stream, 2 p.m. Pacific. Um, 
and it will be acrylic. So uh, I'll let you guys know if there's a makeup class. I'll, I'll make sure to post it in on the server if we're going to do a makeup class. So thank you everyone for joining me. I hope you have a fantastic weekend and I will see you guys next week.